This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. The Swansea community has been left devastated by the death of a six-year-old boy late yesterday. Police have confirmed he was killed by a reversing log truck that was being driven by his father. Late into the night, emergency services were still on the scene. They'd been called to this truck yard on Gordon Street at four o'clock. Police say the six-year-old boy was in the cabin of the fully laden log truck with his dad when he got out with devastating consequences. Whilst the truck was reversing, it appears that the truck has run over the, the six-year-old boy crushing him. An off-duty paramedic from the community was immediately called to the scene to administer first aid, but it's understood nothing could be done to save the little boy's life. The, the local officers told me that death would have been instant. Crash investigators worked at the scene until late last night, trying to determine just exactly how this tragic incident unfolded. But the full details are not known. It'll be investigated and a report will be prepared for the coroner. The community now feeling the loss of the six-year-old boy and especially the 39-year-old father, who police describe as extremely distraught. Swansea's a very tight community. The, the family's very close and he's got a lot of support there. Um, we've also got some uh, medical assistance for the family as well, but they're being well looked after at this point in time. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Will Hodgman's cabinet reshuffle has been made official, with ministers being sworn in at Government House this morning. The Premier has also unveiled his party's candidate for the, Pem for the Pembroke by-election, but a high-profile challenger has emerged. It was a cordial affair at Government House, but one tainted by sadness, with the official confirmation the seriously ill Vanessa Goodwin had resigned as Attorney-General. I accepted the resignations. A reshuffle also due to the resignation of Matthew Groom. His portfolios divided up and others on the move. Peter Gutwin taking on state growth, Guy Barnett energy and Elise Archer stepping down from the speakership, taking on justice, corrections, environment and the arts. I, Elise Nicole Archer, do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen of Australia. The Premier was also sworn in as Attorney-General. Having been appointed as Attorney-General, I invite you to make and subscribe the oath. With Vanessa Goodwin's upper house seat of Pembroke now vacant, the Premier today unveiled Clarence Alderman James Walker as the Liberals' pick. There will be a by-election within just a matter of weeks, um, so it was appropriate to get a suitable candidate in place. I'll fight on the issues and how being a um, a, an elected Liberal member in Parliament, I'll be able to affect those changes. But he's facing a serious challenger in Doug Chipman. G'day, Graham. Good to see you, mate. Thanks, mate. Yeah. The Clarence Mayor already kicking off the door knocking, putting his hand up as an independent. The most important thing from my point of view is that the Upper House continues to be an independent uh, voice. As president of the Local Government Association, he's been a fierce critic of the government's proposed takeover of Taswater. Doug Chipman's view, of course, is, is very aggressively against our plan to take control, to bring prices down and to not penalise councils. So uh, it will be a clear choice on that front. I won't be changing my view in that regard. The issues for me are the issues that concern the residents of Pembroke, in particular healthcare, jobs and uh, traffic congestion. Labor and the Greens are yet to reveal their candidates for Pembroke. We're very saddened by the fact that Vanessa Goodwin has had to retire. She's been a hard-working member for Pembroke and I know from the grassroots she will be missed. But this is an opportunity for Labor to put forward a candidate. Well, we're on the lookout for a candidate right now, but I did just want to take this opportunity to pass on my love and best wishes to Vanessa Goodwin. Uh, she was a fantastic minister. The Electoral Commission says the by-election is expected on November the 4th. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. The looming threat of a hung parliament at the next state election is prompting a push for changes to the Tasmanian constitution. One political expert is leading the charge to remove a certain section, claiming it's an open door for electoral exploitation. It's promises like this. We're also the one party that has said no deals and stuck to our word. We're campaigning for majority Labor government. I won't be doing deals with anybody. 
that's prompting a political expert to make the case for constitutional change. Professor Richard Herr pushing for reforms amid fears of a hung parliament six months out from the state election. All of that causes confusion. It actually distorts the vote because people aren't sure what they're voting for. In the case of a hung parliament, parties need to convince the governor they're the best team to provide stable government, causing a number of controversial outcomes, including in 2010, where the two party leaders refused to settle. David Bartlett and Will Hodgman told the people in Tasmania, we will not form a minority government and this is the advice we're going to give the governor. So they put the pressure on the governor to choose who to believe in campaign promises. That was irresponsible. Removing the section of the state constitution, he says, will prevent the governor from being embroiled in the politics. Just one of a number of changes put forward as the call to restore the size of parliament gains further traction. It's all about you know, having the best governance for Tasmania. Now, the people of Tasmania will vote the way that they want to vote, uh, but we need to make sure there's enough firepower within government to, to form government in a way that makes sense. If you have a hung parliament, the amount of talent available to form a ministry is reduced, and that does re reduce some of the negotiations that parties might make. If negotiations will be required is something that remains to be seen. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. Tasmanian Labor Senator Helen Polly has gone to ground after claiming she is being pressured by her party to support same-sex marriage. The political gag order has drawn criticism from no campaigners who say it sets a bad precedent for open debate. A senator silenced, Helen Polly admitting her party is urging her to publicly support same-sex marriage, despite the fact she voted against it in the postal survey. Published in The Australian today, I've been told that I could be responsible for losing the next federal election. There is pressure from outside, there is pressure from friends, from colleagues, from staffers. Pressure no campaigners believe to be a hallmark of the debate. I'm just sad really that it's uh, descended into the, the way it has. The Christian lobby fears free and fair discussion will only shrink if politics shuns one side of the coin. The reality is if, if Bill Shorten can't ensure that there's freedom of religion and freedom of conscience within his own party, how can he guarantee that to the Australian public if marriage was ever redefined? Every single Greens MP in every single parliament, every single time marriage equality has come on for a vote, have voted yes. Nick McKim says the LGBTI community has received malicious messages during the same-sex debate, but the Green Senator believes in a reasoned, open approach. I don't think any politician needs to be silenced, but people in leadership positions in our community need to be aware of their responsibilities. Helen Polly declined to make any further comment today, but the Catholic Senator is on the record saying she wants to remain true to her constituents, even if voting no goes against the party line. We don't make this huge change without looking at the consequences, so to say that they're a red herring and we shouldn't be talking about them is just ridiculous. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. And in Tasmania, the push continues to ban the sale of all tobacco products to those born after the year 2000. Smoke Free Tasmania today meeting with the state opposition, citing evidence from around the globe that the time is right to butt out. Lobbyists say plans to outlaw tobacco sales to what's been dubbed the smoke-free generation is drawing mixed responses among politicians. It's an idea being pushed in Tasmania by independent MLC Ivan Dean, with the legislation hanging in parliamentary limbo for now. The idea was first generated back in Singapore about uh, uh, five, six years ago and uh, it's really gaining momentum and I think Tasmania still has an opportunity to be a lead in this regard. Senior medical lecturer Dr Nick Tal says Tasmania's higher than average smoking rates, particularly among young pregnant women, highlights the need for urgent action. He says the effects of tobacco on babies continue well beyond the womb. The tobacco-free generation would save two generations, not only the pregnant mother but the unborn child. Smoke Free Tasmania today meeting with the state opposition, but Labor's yet to reach a formal position on the group's proposal. We've had some good discussion in relation to those issues. None of us want to see young people smoking. We're all open to ideas as to how you can prevent young people from ever taking up that first cigarette. Andrew McCarthy, Southern Cross News.
The driver had a lucky escape this afternoon after a car rolled onto its roof following a multi-vehicle crash at Bell Reeve just after one o'clock. Three vehicles collided at the intersection of Beach and Clarence Streets. Two people sustained minor injuries and were taken to the Royal Hobart Hospital. Investigations into the exact cause of the incident are continuing. Tasmanians have handed in nearly 2,000 firearms over the past three months during the National Firearms Amnesty. Police say they're surprised by the number of items surrendered. Among the haul, two semi-automatic rifles and pistols previously reported to be stolen. Ordinarily, before the, um, the National Amnesty was put in place, we'd get about 35 firearms a week handed in to um, police. And during the amnesty, we've had 135 been, on average been handed in a week. Some of the firearms handed in date back more than a century. Police are considering whether to donate the historically significant guns to a museum. Last year, more than 7,000 Tasmanians were injured at work, a statistic that's dropped by 30% over the last six years. But Work Cover Tasmania says it's crucial businesses and workers don't cut corners in order to keep the numbers of deaths and injuries down. Speaking on the state's most recent statistics of workers being injured on the job. 20 Tasmanians every day are injured in the workplace. Work Cover Tasmania launching this month's campaign to reduce workplace deaths and injuries. It is important that when uh, workers leave for work in the morning that they return safely at, at night. Last year alone more than 7,000 Tasmanian staff were injured on the job. Most of these from the health and social assistance industry, followed by staff in public administration, safety and construction. We need to stop cutting corners in the event, and I think you know the recent highly publicised uh, deaths in the mining industry uh, just uh, highlight the importance of making sure that equipment is safe that uh, workers are trained properly. The statistics have dropped dramatically, almost 30% over the last six years. Of course technology has helped um, and a certain amount of stick as compared with carrot, in other words regulation, but there have been prosecutions and uh, that has all contributed to this improved, uh, the, this improved figure want to keep the awareness there so that everybody is doing their level best to make sure that we, we provide safe workplaces. There were nine Tasmanian workplace deaths in 2016. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Tasmania's first female Supreme Court judge is retiring. Justice Shan Tennant reflected on her career at a ceremonial sitting of the court. Representatives from the legal profession, government and police turned out to mark the occasion. Justice Tennant was appointed in 2005 and has four decades of experience in our state's legal system. Children across the country have today joined a global craze to mark the start of school holidays. The hide and seek game praised as a cheap and easy way to get kids ditching devices for the outdoors. It's the craze that is rocking the nation, children ditching technology for painted pebbles. The hide and seek fad has made its way to Tasmania with a goal to get kids outdoors. Gets them off devices, that's the whole aim. Get them off devices, get them creating, get them outdoors, get them into the playgrounds, get them playing hide and seek and the old school fun of having a pet rock. The activity sees hand-painted rocks hidden throughout public parks for children to find and then hide elsewhere. It was introduced to our state by two local mums and has since hit the ground running. It's so amazing to see so many people here in the park all the smiles of people coming in and the excitement of seeing people come in with their bags of rocks. There's everything from the simple to intricate designs. We get amazing things like manga art or comic book art from some of our adult artists and then we get things from kids like glitter or just green paint on a rock and no matter what it is, kids love finding it and they're happy to find it. Another rock hunt will take place in Launceston on Monday next week. Rita Risk, Southern Cross News. City Mission has launched a new service to help vulnerable Tasmanians with the cost of moving house. The initiative will assist low-income earners, senior citizens and domestic violence victims by transporting their belongings at a discounted rate. People that um, are doing it tough, 
uh, things are not that great at the moment for them. Uh, it could be people that uh, have had to move out quickly for, for various reasons. There's always a tremendous need in our community for a service that's affordable. Uh, there are always families that struggle with the costs of moving, don't necessarily have the family resources around them to support that need. Further information regarding referrals for the service can be found on the City Mission website. Now look at the day's business and finance with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has closed higher with slight gains from the four big banks. The ASX 200 index has risen by 47.7 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 78.21 US cents and 88.28. Japanese yen. It's been a batsman's paradise in Perth as the Tasmanian Tigers opened their JLT One Day Cup campaign against New South Wales. In reply to the Blues 316 a short time ago, the Tigers were 4 for 97. The Blues signalled their intent early. Jackson Bird dispatched to the fence on the second ball of the day. Daniel Hughes getting his eye in as Bird then went for consecutive boundaries. Past the cover field, Jordan Silk, and that's raced away to the boundary. Brilliant timing. Nick Maddinson also in on the double act, opening his shoulders to Feckety. New South Wales with all the luck as they steam toward a century without loss. Maddinson the first to reach 50 off 35 balls with a tee shot over mid-off. Goes high over the bowler's head again. Thump this one down to the straight boundary. Hughes following soon after as the Tigers continue to bleed runs. In a controlled fashion and past the fielder there at mid on. And that'll be four. Malenko couldn't stop that one. The breakthrough finally coming in the 21st over as Boyce and Dunk combine to remove Hughes. And that's it. Start the dawn. Incoming batsman Curtis Patterson picking up the slack as the Blues cruised past 150 before Maddinson showed the Tigers just how to play a whack a deck. That's the shot of the day from Nick Maddinson. Maddinson then cruised past the ton on his way to 137 as Tasmania struggled. The Team 200 coming up in just the 32nd over. Steady wickets eventually helping the cause but the Blues still finished with an imposing 6 for 316. In reply, Ben Dunk wasn't intimidated as he and Ben McDermott burst out of the blocks, the pair racing to 50 in style. And he's hardly blinked an eye that guy taking that catch. Back to the conversation. It didn't end there as the Tigers tamed the Lion. And the wicket skies this one, a massive hit. Edwards just watches it sail over his head. But he was soon back out of his cage, removing Dunk for 38. Oh, it's a perfect catch behind, he's out. Nathan Lyons done the trick. Alex Doolan the next man in, but a flurry of wickets meant he too was soon back in the sheds as the chase continued. Andrew McCarthy, Southern Cross News. And in just a few hours' time, Hobart's Sarah Haywood will begin her campaign at the World Archery Youth Championships in Argentina. She will represent the country in the recurve bow discipline, while Launceston's Matthew Everett is preparing to compete in the compound bow division. The 19-year-old is considered a favourite after going to the Open Age World Championships in the US earlier this year. The event is the main qualifier for the Youth Olympic Games being held in 2018. Good evening Hobart, 20 degrees today, Launceston 18, Burnie 19 and Devonport 15. 22 is the high at Campania with Fingal and Friendly Beaches not far behind on 21. Temperatures in the east up to 5 above average. Bushy Park 20, Wynyard St Helens 19, Liawini and Grove 17, Lowhead 15, Strawn and the Islands managing 14 degrees. There is low level cloud across western Tasmania along with Victoria and South Australia. A mid-level cloud band is approaching western Australia with another band of cloud covering most of the northeast of New South Wales and eastern Queensland. Low level cloud there across our west with that higher layer over the southeast of the state. Tomorrow, the high over the Tasman Sea extends a ridge over most of southeast Australia. Another high will be to the west of Perth and a cold front just to our west with low pressure troughs through central parts. Northwesterly winds at 15 to 25 knots, lighter and more variable over the east, but reaching 30 knots over the south. A switch to the southwest over southern waters expected later on, swells up to 4 metres. Strong wind warning from Tasman Island to Low Rocky Point. A partly cloudy Tuesday for Hobart, 18 the top, 16 for Adventure Bay with a late shower moving in. Taralea, 2 to 13 with a shower or two. Launceston, an afternoon shower maybe, 17 the top, 16 for Devonport, a shower or two clearing from Bridport and 15 the maximum. 
A shower or two clearing from Burnie as well. 14 the top, 15 for Strawn, a shower or two Marawar, 14 degrees. And fine and partly cloudy for St Helens, 18, 20 for Swansea and Whitemark, partly cloudy and 16 degrees. Not much rain getting over the east still. UV sitting in the moderate to high range. On Wednesday, early showers over the west and south with a few developing elsewhere later in the morning. Rain extending across the state on Thursday and an easing in the wet weather on Friday with east to south easterly winds. Fine tomorrow in Perth, Adelaide and Melbourne, early fog for Canberra, a possible shower forecast for Sydney with 24 degrees, a storm over Brisbane and the chance of a shower for Darwin. Mostly clear and 15 in Hobart, 15 in Launceston, clear and 13 degrees right now in Devonport. I can report, Joe, that Mrs Murphy and son Jack got through grand final day without causing too much damage. And, of course, it made my weekend a lot more bearable, more bearable than it could have been. But despite their big win, Richmond are only fourth pick for the flag next year behind Adelaide, GWS and Sydney. So I look forward to wearing the red and white this time next year. <laughs> Oh gosh, it just rolls on and on, doesn't it? Yes, well done, Donna. We're very happy for you. That's all from the news team for now. Thanks so much for your company. We'll see you a little bit later. Bye-bye.